Okay, the video capture has started. I call the house to order. Welcome to the HKDBTC judging test. The motion before the house today is this house as a homosexual athlete would not participate in the Sochi Olympic. Without further ado, I now call upon the Prime Minister to open today's debate. Here, here, here. Here, here. Let's contextualize this debate. What now? Understand what is going on for homosexuals in Russia? In Russia, the government is very anti-homo. As you can see that oh, through what Vladimir Putin has done and how he treats the people, those people they had a uh, the homo people have had like awareness campaign trying to. Uh, spread the, to allow make homosexual stuff to be allowed in Russia, and you can see that how that the government reacted by beating them up, using the police force, and terrorizing them, yeah. and marginalize basically marginalizing them, and making it impossible to be to be a homo in a homosexual yeah. in Russia. So why do I take this stand as a homosexual addict? Because I believe that. Sports, especially this Winter Olympic, this is such a big event. This event, it, the the Olympics, the most like Olympics focuses on the participation of every every country, of every country in the world. It's like as to to promote the, the slogan, a way to promote the slogan that everyone, every from all over all sort all parts of the world, any type, any anybody, in fact. So it should be given that free. Uh, it should be liberal, and everyone can participate. Yeah, but yeah, now, so. but by having this, uh, by Russia not allowing ho the way the Russia treats homosexual in such a way, it shows that it does not. It's not in line with the spirit of the Olympics. The Olympics is there to allow people from different nations, different like uh, backgrounds, different types, different experiences, different lifestyles to come together and compete under one. Under one name, in order to to promote uh, learning from each, uh, promote diversification, and to allow us to a way as a place to show off our talents, regardless of who you are. Do you not think that in none of this Olympic spirit, the homosexuals should actually make this good use of this channel to actually fight for their own rights in this country that is being so oppressive of those people? Exactly. We want we here. Like here. To, we would like to fight for our own rights by not joining the Olympics. And why? Then it comes to my second point. The thing is, the Olympics is such a major event. I as an athlete, when I decide not to participate in the Winter Olympics, I will publicly announce that I, as an accomplished athlete, will not participate in the, in the Olympics. And by doing this, this will attract media attention like all over, all over the world. People will be asking, what if this athlete were to join the Olympics and then would he win? This now for all those who for those who went to the Olympics, those winners of the Olympics, them winning is because of it could be because of me not participating. So they win by default. It's not by it's not the truth. You, you cannot determine whether is it you are the best in the world. It's just because you are the best within that point, and then by doing so, using the by attracting media attention, I would. I, as a homosexual, will be able to make my point clear and to to bring the world on focus onto Russia and to show that how and to make Russia to do something about it. If so, this will attract media attention and it will help my cause. For example, if you can, 
in the, for the South African rugby, because during that time they were part of the type, they were not allowed to. They are not allowed to participate in the competition. And what what happens later on was the because that rugby competition was such an important thing to them, they started rethinking their acts, and then sooner or later, as you see, then things got better. So this is hopefully what this is what it will have, this will is what will happen in the Olympics by for me if I if I choose not to participate, it will attract all the media attention to them and then by that that they will make they will give awareness for the for Russia to change the way they treat homosexuals. So do you think it is fair to you to prove your cause by and actually at the expense of undermining the efforts of the winners at the Olympic Games? Exactly. By doing so it, because this is such a by doing so, it will attract media attention all yeah. over the world to my to my stance. People will be by undermining the athletes' things. I will get as a homosexual. I will get what I want to be done. And because Russia has can not see the way I see things by allowing homosexuals to to be to be in the country, then they will have to make a change. Because we, like I said previously, media everyone will be looking at them. And then they will be forced to do something like the like the previous example I mentioned. That's the end. Um, is it also likely that the media will depict these homosexual athletes who boycott the game as that they're actually afraid and they're not as competent and they will never be able to prove themselves because they're not in the game? Well, as I mentioned, that I am already, I am already known as a renowned athlete. I am accomplished. I have my name. That it's already a known thing that I have. I am the one who I have talent as proven by my previous records in previous Olympics. So this just because I did not enter one Olympic, that doesn't mean that my previous records that I have already shown is does not mean anything. So by not this. Then it does not mean that I do not, I cannot, I do not have the talent, and I'm just afraid to show because I already have a record of things, of my previous accomplishment. That's I am the speech. Thank you, Prime Minister, for this speech. I now invite the leader of the opposition. Here, here. Today I'll bring to you two points of substantive. The first one being why the gesture of not participating in the Olympics is actually a really um, repressive gesture of the homosexuals who are, will actually be depicted as backing down from the road of asserting their own rights, which is of course not conducive to the entire campaign of um, promoting the rights of the homosexuals. And the second point will be about how this Olympics at Sochi will actually be a very good channel for the homosexual athletes and for the homosexual communities across the whole world to make use, of, make use of in order to actually force Russia and pressurize Russia to actually back away from all this cracking down and cruel treatment against the homosexuals. Okay. But before that, there will be several points of rebuttal against the points that has been raised by the Prime Minister. They talk about how the Olympics is actually a really major event, international event, etc. We do. But we agree with that. Yeah. And I talk about how the spirit of Olympics is actually about fairness and etc. And we also agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So what the problem comes down to the points from the Prime Minister is that if given that Olympics is actually a major event of international renown and is also promoted to be fair, then of course we will say that you can actually, as a homosexual elite, make use of this uh, platform, make use of this platform who actually fair use fairness and to go there as a proven grounds to prove your own abilities you. and see that when you as a homosexual athlete using your own capabilities you are still achieving something 
then you will be showing to the entire world that be it homosexual or be it heterosexual, sports is not about your um, sexual orientation and it's, it's not about um, like uh, preferential treatment, it's all about um, merits, it's all about uh, capabilities and you also show the world that even if you're homosexual there's no uh, reason for any country or any regime to undermine your value in the world, okay. no thank you. And they also talk about public attention, they talk about drawing the media's attention, they talk about how it's good if the media sees that you as a homosexual, if they boycott the event and they will, it will actually make people rethink about the event. Well, the rethinking bit is true, but the way that people rethink is actually not what will happen as the Prime Minister portrays. When the homosexual atheist actually backs away from the Olympics, the actually the effect of the media portrays on people, on, on the entire world and different communities is actually as follows. And of course this is exactly overlapping with my first substantive. When the homosexual atheist back away, and people would think that, oh, given that this is such a good chance for you to assert your own rights, if this golden opportunity in front of you, but for some reason you are on your own, making your own choice to actually step away and back down and actually let go of this choice to, to assert your rights, no thank you. What the choice, the effects that comes out, is that people would actually think that even you yourself, as a homosexual atheist, is actually thinking that being homosexual may be actually something wrong. Even you yourself is not are not too sure about whether homosexuality is actually a right or a wrong thing to do. So thank you. And this is actually this will actually give a very uh, uneasy feeling to all homosexual people across the community because you, as an avid of world renowned as portrayed by a prime minister, is actually not willing to stand up against the um, opp your oppressors uh, and not willing to assert your right on this uh, major international event, which is a really good channel for you to do so. Yes. So, I am not a Russian citizen. I am not a Russian athlete. I am a homosexual athlete from other places. So, how is it that I have rights that are being oppressed by Russian authorities and need to be asserted in like Russia? Then, are you not, or are you saying that you, as a non-Russian homosexual athlete, actually do not care about Russian homosexuals who is being crushed and oppressed in Russia. No, sir. You say that we do not really we do not want to encourage sec um no segregation is bad word. We do not want to encourage uh well at least an ununified atmosphere among the homosexual people in the world. Here, here. What you talk about is that you as a non Russian, because you won't be oppressed in Russia anyway, so I should actually not care about the Russian homosexuals there and just let them suffer. And we say that this is extremely problematic. Uh, no, thank you, sir. And this actually ties up with my second point about how it actually helps to pressurize Russia to get to back away from all this oppression against the homosexuals. Look at the Olympics. It's actually, as I said, it's an international event. So imagine uh, what would happen if you, as a non-Russian athlete, is facing a potential uh, unfair treatment in the Russian Olympics at Sochi. What happens is that there is actually have a really deep <coughs> ties and strings of connections with uh, Russians, international relations, and diplomatic ties with yeah, other yeah. countries. Why? There is actually a slight, uh, really fine distinction between Russia um, oppressing Russian homosexuals and Russia oppressing non-Russian athletes at the Sochi Olympics. Why? Because as um, in the government of other countries, say America or Britain, when they see Russian homosexuals being oppressed, they may as well stand up and say, oh, that's not right, you better quit it. And even if Russia does not quit it, they don't really have a stake in it, so they don't really care. But in the case of, say, an American or British homosexual athlete being oppressed in uh, the Olympics, what happens is that the government of that particular uh, athlete's orig origin will actually really care. And of course, what yeah. happens is that the, I mean, this actually will actually upset the um, countries a lot when it's compared with um, Russians, homosexuals being oppressed in locally in Russia. And because of this potential um, detriment, that it will, that is actually not preferred by the Russian government. And that what we say it is actually a very clever way to make use of this Sochi Olympics because of this high stake that the Russian government has inherently. It's actually a very clever way to be there as a homosexual athlete of a foreign origin to go there and actually force 
or pressurize fascia to back away from its preferential treatments, or at least force them to back away from these, um, you know, really um, discriminating fields of against the homosexuals, and to force them to look at you with no difference with any heterosexual atheist in the world. And we see this is actually a big step ahead on the road for the homosexuals to fight for their own rights. And therefore we say today, these are two big reasons for a homosexual atheist to actually attend the Olympics and assert their own rights. Thank you. I thank the leader of the opposition for the speech. I now invite the deputy prime minister. Hey, see here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, as a fellow homosexual, I believe I have a very strong obligation to stand for the rights of our own kind, especially in the places where they're most oppressed. I believe I have an obligation not to bow down and not to endorse great events which do not hold true to the values of those who should organize it, do not hold true the values of inclusiveness, and in the end, I would like to end the predicament of homosexuals in Russia. In my speech today, I have three very simple things to tell you. The first is why this is principally justified. The second is why, how the media would react, in particular the Russian media. And the third is to talk about how the Russian people would react in the long term and how we move towards a greater acceptance towards homosexuals. Before that, some very brief responses to the leader of opposition who believes, firstly, that we as homosexuals in the Western liberal democracy should go to Russia, be oppressed to make a point. That's ridiculous. We don't think we should just go there anticipating that we'll get beaten up and in so far as he does not understand what happens to homosexuals, get dragged on the streets at the back end of cars until our heads get severed. That is not a very good thing. I think we should protect our own lives. The second thing I want to talk about is essentially how he wants us to assert rights which we are not infringed. We think the best thing is to take a unified stance against such a regime, against such a legislature, and against such a belief system with the Russian homosexuals who are in the closet right now or who are just plain dead. We think those are hugely unifying things that we should do and I have to further analyze it what is happening in the timer <clears throat> in my own speech. So firstly, why is it principally justified? Two reasons. First of all, because we already told you how this Olympics movement is about inclusiveness as outlined in the Charter. That's why we also invite North Korea to participate, even though they're an international pariah state. Essentially, we want everyone to be on an equal basis to compete. What happens is we don't have discouragement of any group of people or disincentivize of any group of people. What you have in Russia is essentially delegitimization of an entire group of people based on their intrinsic identities that we think is illegitimate, that we think the Olympic movement is fundamentally contradictory to. The second thing is how we should not endorse such an event, because going to Salki as a homosexual means two things. First of all, it means essentially that you essentially don't care about what happens because you don't make a fuss about it before you go to Salki. You still compete, you still win the glory, you still go for Russian propaganda, you still get captured on the Russian pamphlet as the, you know, the guy who won it for the Russian propaganda. Essentially what you endorse that event, you essentially what you feel that event, and you are against the values of homosexuality in terms of saving, oh yeah, uh, point, guys, uh, in terms of solidarity and in terms of endorsing your own exactly. movement. The second thing I want to talk about is the media. They want you to believe, essentially, that the Russian media would perceive these guys as scared. There are two responses to this. First of all, if the Russian media cares about you, it probably means you're a pretty good athlete. We don't think Russian media would be just pick up on a random homosexual and say, look, this guy who never won anything is boycotting us and we're not going to make a big deal out of it. It has to be someone significant. 
and it has to be someone with a call function to create any sort of media attention that they want or they want to avoid. So Essentially, you're talking about high-profile athletes intrinsically. Essentially, you're talking about high-profile boycotts and high-profile, essentially, delegitimization of entire competitions because now the rhetoric around those individual events is what if this guy who has won, you know, last Olympics and all the world champions in between had participated? What if he had participated, he would have displaced this Russian athlete on top of the gold medal board, he would have won that competition. You ensure controversy dodges every single event of the Sochi Olympics. You ensure these Sochi Olympics will never be clean, will never be seen as what the Russian government wants to see it is, which is a great accomplishment. It is essentially a shame. Closing. Points. Oh, uh, yes, sir. We think that people have multiple facets of identities. Why is it principally applies for these individuals to prioritize their um, sexual identity versus their sportsmanship? Madam, two responses. First of all, the plight of the plight of homosexuals in Russia is perhaps beyond your own comprehension in that their right to life is being threatened, in that their right to liberty, speech are all being threatened. We think these are tremendously important things to stand up for. Secondly, this is about what I should do as a homosexual athlete. So I define what is important to me. And I think that asserting my homosexual identity is more important than skiing faster than someone else. What happens in the media? The second thing that will happen in the media essentially is this. If you get a tokenistic representation on their side, by saying, no, oh, no, there's a homosexual. Our soft field Olympics is all accepting and all inclusive. That's rubbish. What we do right now, especially if we do it in unity with other homosexual athletes, is we create a movement, we create an entire media campaign built against that sort of anti-homosexual rhetoric in Russia right now, which is what you can't do as individual athletes winning individual events or even in most probability not winning individual events in those things, right? You have a unified front, you have a unified theme that the media can capture and present to the public and confront the Russian public with it. We think that's much more effective, we think that's much more unified, we think it's much more pervasive into that event, as I already told you, every single event, every single media outlet, instead of some talking with representation. So how do the Russian people do it? This is essentially what happens in every single homophobic community. You have a group of ideologues who, you know, hate homosexuals, and then you have a bunch of people who don't really care or who thinks it's unimportant to care. We then we force these sorts of people who are not who may be indifferent towards the plight of homosexuals to confront that issue. Once you have such a broadcasted media campaign and such a unified media campaign built to attack that national pride, you essentially enforce and bring that issue to the top of their heads and the top of their mental space to force them to consider and take a start. We think that they should take a start, and we think that in most, of, in most cases, they are more likely to take a stance that will be favoring the rights of homosexuals simply because we think that the presentation of that thing will essentially establish Russia as an international pariah in terms of homosexual issues and force them to essentially obey with us. We are very, very happy to defend our own population and we're most happy to boycott a shameful Olympics. gentlemen, what the opening government just brought to us today was a situation in which we are hiding away, we are being scared, and we are ignoring the current situation that Russia is facing. We should stand up and confront the situation as a homosexual. Here, here. We believe that we should go to Russia face to face, deal with these people, and not as only one, two famous athletes, but we're talking about the whole community. Here. 
here, here. To be able to pressurize the Russian government to be just to all the homosexuals in their country and not just for a temporary solution in which the media will just try to depict the current situation that <coughs> a, homosexual, a famous homosexual is not willing to join the Olympics because of the situation in Russia. But this is not what the media will do because the media will only talk about the situation for a while and eventually it will be ignored. And thus, this is not pressurizing the government of Russia. And instead, we should go there and pressurize the government of Russia as a whole, as a community. This way, we will make this international event remarkable in which other countries will be able to see how fair um, and just the situation might turn out to be. Yes. It's not necessary for you to go to Russia to pressure the Russian government uh, face to uh, not not face to face, but you can just you know call them and say we disagree with all your whole cancer of sexual behavior. But one, by one call, you think the media will be able to capture the whole situation that all homosexuals are not agreeing to join the Olympics? Basically, what we're suggesting to you is to go there, take part in the Olympics, and make people be aware that Russian government will change their mind and eventually this will lead to them not only taking into consideration, consideration the sexual identity, but also the idea of sportsmanship in which these uh, individuals, these homosexual individuals, are standing up for their rights, being willing to change Russia for the good. And this will help to pressurize the country because the Russian government will not try to just uh, simply, uh, how to say, oppress these homosexuals who are entering their country right now because this will yeah. affect and damage the international relations of Russia with other countries. And this is not what Russia would want. And by eventually accepting uh, homosexuals from other countries, it will lead to them changing their perspective about homosexuals in their country. And thus, this will lead for a better future for all homosexuals. And thus, we highly propose this suggestion. And this task will not make the, the media portray these homosexuals as someone who's ignorant, someone who's scared, someone who's hiding behind uh, this, false, uh, this false identity that uh, we're homosexuals, so we should stay away. We should bring an equality to the society in which these homosexuals are standing up and actually converting the situation. And this will lead to a lot of awareness campaigns wherein these people will not be terrorized as the way they're being terrorized right now. And this will promote the slogan that homosexuals Adam, should get what they deserve. Yes. Why is it necessary for these athletes to compete then if all you want is for them to go to Russia, do a PR campaign about homosexual rights? We're not suggesting them to, to go there and campaign or go and protest on the streets and, oh, homosexuals should get their rights. That's what we're suggesting. We're suggesting by joining this competition, by competing with other, uh, with other media, with other athletes from other countries, we're actually making them, uh, making the country be pressurized to treat homosexuals in their country just the same as they are treating these homosexual athletes from other countries. And thus, this will lead to a lot of. Um, this will not be a way for the media to be manipulated, but instead it will lead them to achieve something in the end. So by what the opening government suggested in which the uh, you, one famous athlete will say, I'm not gonna join the I'm not gonna join the Olympics, this is somewhat staying behind for your own means, for your own safety, protecting your own rights. And this is not what the this is not what homosexuals should actually do. We're proposing that the homosexuals should actually go there, homosexual athletes should actually go there and prove to themselves because this will be the only chance and motivation for them to actually Adam. stand up for the rights of their um, other uh, fellow homosexuals. And thus, this will help promote a greater community in which everyone will be treated equally. equally. I'm talking about the idea of their capabilities by standing up behind and saying that uh, I'm a better athlete and undermining the effort of those athletes that have are winning or, or already have won. You're just simply not looking at the capabilities and saying that uh, being homosexual might be a better athlete or you because you're homosexual you might be a better athlete, but that might not be true. So you should go there and confront the situation and get the attention that you need not, not only by just standing behind, and thus this will allow the capabilities of all athletes to be put forth in the front, and thus this will lead to a lot of public attention. Yes. So that that we're this is the this is the concept of sportsmanship. We're not saying that it's definite that this homosexual athlete who's not joining.
joining will um, is not joining will then wait. Then this doesn't mean to say that the homosexual athlete who's denied to join is a better athlete. We should just go there as an equal complete uh, as an equal equal athlete to the other at the other heterosexual wait the other heterosexual athlete and at the same time compete with them on the same level. This shows how much confidence, how much courage that athlete has to dare and confront the situation with the other athlete who may be homophobic. But this doesn't mean to say that by losing to that homophobic athlete, it means to say that he's, um, homosexuals are not good athletes. This doesn't entirely imply that because what he did was he dared, he brought the confidence, the courage to actually go up in the front, prove to others that he might be a better athlete. This chance that he might not be a better athlete will not really affect the campaign of promoting that homosexuals um, should be given rights. Because the concept is not to show that homosexuals are better athletes, but to show that homosexuals deserve to be treated equally like other athletes. And thus, this will help um, make the situation a better place. And we believe by, as a, by going there as a group, we're actually pressurizing the, country, uh, the Russian government to be to treat everyone equally in their country, and this will have a positive consequence uh, and impact to the athletes currently in their country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Open and closing half. I invite the mentor to come. Yes. Speaker, today opening opposition kicked out mainly with two arguments. First of all, they keep emphasizing athletes should really go to Russia uh, because they, they can carry out, they just stand out and carry out certain kinds of actions to go against the Russian kind of um, um, oppression towards homosexuals. But they never told us like what anything specific, what's so special in Russia that we that can only be done in Russia yeah, that yeah. requires those athletes to really fly there. To like to go like go on strike or go go like for demonstration. We also see a very very severe problem solution gap, in which like if the Russian government knows that you you guys are going there to have a mess or mess around or like to, to go on demonstration, then obviously they won't allow you to get there by not like issuing visa yeah. to you guys before you guys depart, or you you may you like those athletes will, will get locked up or like if you get arrested in Russia and you guys are doing there. You don't really see how it is actually going to achieve your goal right there. And also over the obviously you can keep talking about like these kind of athletes are afraid, are scared. But ladies and gentlemen you see this is totally wrong in the sense that uh, not going to not attending this Winter Olympics is also a kind of active action, active choice by those athletes in which they are bearing the consequence responsibly by not at deciding not attending the Winter Olympic uh, in Russia. So obviously these kind of athletes are not um, afraid of the Russian like regime. But on the other hand, they're just um, taking like uh, expressing their opinion in an other way by not attending the Winter Olympics. And we also see how by attending uh, the Winter Olympic is actually a very wrong and symbolic meaning in the sense that like. Um, those athletes are actually disagreeing with the ideology of the Russian government, yeah, yeah. which are like, which is like um, anti-homosexuality. Um, what you guys are proposing is actually to encourage the athletes to go to a, a, a um, il an illegitimate competition yeah, yeah. Um, believed by those athletes and to agree, somehow to agree the legitimacy of the winter yeah, yeah. Olympics, to agree with the ideologies by the Russian government. We see somehow this is very wrong in terms of symbolic meaning. That is why, we, ladies and gentlemen, we on side government believe that those athletes should never participate yeah, in yeah. Um, the uh, winter Olympics in Sochi. 
And second of all, they also talk about how like the media is not strong enough to persuade or pressurize the Russian government, which I will deal with it later in my first substantive. So going straight to my first substantive, which is about how um, how these kind of athletes not by not taking part in Winter Olympic is actually going to bring up um, social discourses, and public discourses. So we see it like in in terms of status quo, Russia is obviously discriminating against these kind yeah, of yeah. homosexuals. And we see somehow the tools today that we're using today is not taking part. Other than a symbolic meaning, we also believe that not taking part is the last resort that these kind of athletes can like to, can express their opinion simply because like many of kinds of like demonstrations or large scale political activity are somehow illegal in Russia. You got those people who get blocked or get arrested. And we only by like sending a strong message not taking part in Winter Olympic is actually the last resort that this kind of activist can really use in Russia. So we also see somehow the media we have strong motives and strong capacity to pressurize, um, to, to bring up public attention and eventually pressurize the Russian government. You see somehow like those newspapers in the US, like Washington Post, etc. We, we were really pleasant to like report something, some flaws by the Russian government, like they, they are really doing a good job in like, they, they are, on the other hand, they are actually um, oppressing those homosexuals in Russia. Yeah, and yeah. also, we, we see somehow they are very capable of doing that in the sense that there is a large uh, number of audiences, not only in the US, but like around the world. We see somehow it is definitely capable of bringing up public attention and, and therefore enhance public discourses. So eventually we see there will be, like, in, in terms of two places, first of all, in terms of, like, uh, more developed countries, it's actually going to be um, helping those homosexuals. Simply because, like, these kind of more developed countries are more civilized, more open-minded, they have, like, they were, in general, in support, um, like, for these kind of homosexuals. So, at the end of the day, we see somehow, like, those uh, sponsors, those large companies in more developed countries will not sponsor this kind of Winter Olympics, will not send teams to Winter Olympics. Eventually, like, they can simply but ignore or boycott the Winter Olympics by not attending opening ceremony, etc. Our national pride, we see all of the calculus of the Russian government, they can, they, they can only, like, give in or compromise, and therefore, the goals can be achieved by, like, not taking part in um, yeah, yeah. The, the Winter Olympics. Also, in terms of like other less developed countries, we see um, like we are actually telling these less developed countries that um, like tell, telling these less developed countries government that despite the fact that these uh, homosexuals are minorities, they should always be protected, or otherwise they have to bear their own consequences. Like they can really influence to a large extent to to any kinds of policies that are affecting like everybody in society. And second of all, I'll talk about how it is that, um, not um, um, the, the, it is uh, actually affecting the fair ground of competition uh, in Russia. So we see that somehow um, um, the status quo is actually opposing uh, unfairness towards hom homo athletes and therefore hindering the legit legitimacy of the Winter Olympics. We see somehow what is happening in Russia is very simple. We see they are actually doing something against the fairness of competition towards these people. In terms of organizer, the, the, the ideologies is biased. We also mm -hmm. see somehow local media or audiences forming a social norm in Russia is yeah, actually yeah. going to um, mentally affecting the homosexuals activists in, um, from all around the world when they're in Russia. At the end of the day, we see somehow they, they will be mentally affected uh, firstly, affected. I mean, like, uh, and, and therefore undermining their performance. We see somehow this is definitely not fair for those um, homo athletes to really compete in a fair and uh, a fair manner in the Winter Olympics. We see somehow only by uh, boycotting the Winter Olympics by those homo athletes can they really achieve the goal? Can they really self-actualize and tell everybody in the world their homosexuality should not? and should not be discriminated against. And therefore, we're proud to vote. Yeah.
ladies and gentlemen, I'll first uh, give you a rebuttal about uh, uh, the safety of the athletes. Um, regarding what um, the opening government, uh, they say that um, the athletes may be beaten up, or the closing government uh, said that oh, they may be locked up or arrested. Uh, we think that this situation, we put the Russian government in a dilemma. First of all, if they really lock them up, that will be a very important and serious infringement of their yeah, liberty. Yeah. And that, if they really do so, I think that it will raise the awareness of the international community to see uh, yeah, yeah. what the, uh, the serious infringement of the human rights in, in Russia. And, but they, if they don't lock, lock them up, or when they spread um, the homosexual idea, I think that this will uh, directly um, promote this idea to the local Russian people. And this is far more effective uh, than just uh, boycotting the events uh, uh, outside Russia. Because um, this, um, for the, the local media may, may uh, just uh, brainwash is people that they do not come here to compete simply because they are mentally weak, and and if they uh, but if they really so, try to promote the, the athletes promote the idea locally in this competition, it will be much more effective. And I'll so I'll then give uh, closing and uh, the close opposition will give you um, two extension. First of all, um, why gay people are being discriminated? It's because normal people think that gay people, uh, they're physically or mentally, they are weaker than uh, heterosexual people. There is some something wrong or some mistake in their genetics. That's why so, they behave uh, unlike. Yes, every single homosexuality that loses to a heterosexuality will, under your model, be broadcast by the Russian media as a validation of the claim that you just made. Actually, people in these, um, people in Russia, they have already uh, received a message that hect uh, homosexual people are less capable of heterosexual people. So if they, uh, if they try to promote that again, it is not going to be impacting to these local people. But if a homosexual athlete, they run faster than other heterosexual people, this will be a great impact to the local local people. That's, it is something different from what their government has been telling them. And actually, um, all right, if this is actually uh, a, a promotion of uh, uh, Homosexual people are not less capable of heterosexual people. And um, the second point is that so, um, by the second the second second extension that brought to you uh, exclusively is that if if some pe some athletes may not be willing to reveal that they are uh, they are gay. So if if they um, if some if a, if a group of homosexual athletes they are boycotting the Olympics, they may they may be think that uh, they they may be they have to make a choice between sexual identity and sportsmanship and the efforts they have devoted in training. It's because so, if they go to the go to the uh, Olympics, they will become a traitor uh, to their sexual identity. Here, here. They betray um, people who gave up the chance to gain recognition of the training. But if these athletes do not attend the Olympics, then they are actually directly telling others that they are gay, which so, they do not want to do, because they want to be private. So if one group of uh, homosexual people boycott, uh, they actually, they are, um, they are letting those people who want to be silent in a dilemma and if and there are some people who may not uh, want to, if they do not, uh, they still attend the Olympics. But and 
So uh, for gay ethics, then they may this may underestimate the population of gay ethics, and this actually reduces the um, impacts that these ethics, the gay ethics, want to promote in this Olympic stuff. Yes. To promote the issue of homosexual acceptance, you need a unified media campaign, which we, if every single athlete, homosexual athlete, agrees to our proposal, can create. Versus in your event, where atomized events won by one single homosexual athlete, who is unlikely to give any sort of media implication. Um, we're talk, um, I think there is a lot of uh, homosexual athletes, and some of them really want, they are really, uh, they really care about their rights, or they really want to voice out. This is their, their option. But some of them, they remain, they want to remain silent and do not want to stand up for this campaign. And I think we, if we just are boycotting, we uh, then it will uh, give the other party in in uh, in a dilemma. So, uh, in, so in conclusion, uh, what we brought to you is that uh, we what we want is that. We want to put the Russian government in dilemma, but not part of the homosexual athletes. And secondly, um, we want to embrace the idea that homosexual athletes uh, have the same or even more physical strength or mental toughness than uh, heterosexual athletes, which is contrary to the belief that most Russian people have today. Thank you. Thank the member of the government, a uh, member of the opposition, for you to find out where the government would you can see the government attention. Yes. Today we have the opposition coming from the utopia that tells us how a revolution in Russia is actually possible and is actually possible to for foreigners to actually pressurize the, uh, the local Russian government. But ladies and gentlemen, we on the side opposition, the side opposition provides a more feasible plan and provides here, here. a more safety, uh, uh, more safety to uh, to the athletes and a more uh, and a better way in terms uh, uh, in terms of influencing the whole the whole gay community in Russia. So let me begin my speech by telling why these revolutions are are essentially uh, not feasible. So, uh, so from athletes' viewpoints, they don't really have the capabilities to do so because they just don't get the business. Because when you're telling all the others that you are going to, to organize a protest, you're, that you're going to organize a demonstration in Russia, then the Russian government obviously won't, give, won't grant you business and you can't really carry out protests in, in that place. And they also don't get the motive to do so. Because they realize that when they uh, when uh, when they are going to the Russia, there are high chances of them getting getting killed. No matter it's because they they they're gay and they'll be beaten up by any sing, single strangers in the Russians because because they're gay and and, and they they they're also being killed at uh, risk being killed because they are organizing a protest and you know the Russian police are really uh, are really uh, muscular and they can do anything. <laughs> They like, and they, they are also getting risk of getting locked up because you know Russian governments are, are authoritarian rulers, and they, they just do whatever they want without uh, without caring about the laws. And when we are saying so, uh, of course they are their borders. But when when we are saying Russians, we are saying that Russians uh, is a is a country that is pretty isolated because uh, it has a poor international relations. So it doesn't really care whether uh, whether its relations is good or bad with the U.S. with the UK and just did what they want for the, uh, for the sake of their stability and for the sake of their promoting of the ideology. So what about the Russian government? They, they have uh, the capability to do so because they just oppress any single uprising from uh, uh, uprising from uh, from the athletes. For example, they just locked up the pussy cats. Anyway, and they also have the motive to do so because uh, they have this thing, uh, because they have this disability, 
and and we also don't think that the revolutions are possible because uh, because of the tools that uh, tools that uh, they've been using. Because uh, they apart from the protests and demonstrations, and uh, that the opposition has also talked about uh, how uh, how they're actually gonna win the the competition in order to prove a point and then they change they change the mindset uh, of the Russian people. So, ladies and gentlemen, we don't we don't say that's the case because uh, when, uh, of course we know for most civilized uh, people we say that uh, when we when we when we when we learn that the heterosexuals were actually outperforming the homosexuals, we know that genes are uh, okay. But when we, uh, we at this time we are we're dealing with the, uh, with the Russian people who have their uh, uh, who have their part. Primarily socialization, and that 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 these gay people are uh, have something wrong in in their genetics, and they've been educated from young uh, from young from their parents, from the education, and from the government, and they are actually brainwashed, uh, brainwashed, and and these uh, single special cases cases will really change the whole mindset of the people because they will still believe that uh, the, 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 the gay people have something wrong with their genes because they're uh, they are, they are having pain in the ass again. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they, uh, so uh, they also talk about the benefits uh, uh, of the revolution. No, madam. Uh, they are saying that it's actually not that regressive. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I'm uh, not that regressive comparing to uh, to uh, to the model we propose today. They're saying that our model is pretty regressive in the sense that they're just back backing down. But then when the people realize that they back down, it's not because of their abilities; it's because of their ideology. And people don't really think that that's a really kind of uh, a regressive gesture. And we and we believe that uh, uh, to to define what what is regressive or not is is to define by other people. And we also say that it is uh, actually a more brave, uh, brave gesture to actually not go to a competition because we say an Olympics is a real event, and if you are not going uh, going to uh, to the Olympics to earn your fame, to earn to earn extra money, then you are actually more brave uh, than than going to. It. And they also talk uh, how uh, uh, how uh, how the benefits are uh, uh, that uh, they won't let Russian Russian gay people suffer. But then, well, uh, but then our our mo the mo uh, the end in our model is actually to uh, to have a change in the Russian government. Is to have a uh, is to have a change in mindset uh, towards the gay people, and and that's why we believe that well, uh, our model will eventually help uh, help uh, help the gay people. So what what does the uh, side pro uh, side government has told you today? We've told you that uh, we've told you about the sanity of sports, how Olympics essentially mean, and how and how Russian uh, Russian government, i.e., the organizer of the Winter Olympics, are actually contradicting with the uh, with the meaning of Olympics to be uh, to be uh, having it on a fair ground. And and the opening government has also talked about attracting the media uh, the media attention. And and when uh, and when. Uh, uh, and the closing closing government actually extending and uh, uh, building on that point to actually said to actually uh, give you a full picture of how uh, uh, of how uh, how it will actually ar arises a social uh, uh, political discourses by not taking part and uh, by not taking part and announcing publicly and 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 arousing a great great attention of the media and we all, we've also talked why the me why the media actually has the incentives to do so and the capa uh, capabilities to do, do so because. They, they have more uh, because the media from uh, from the Western world have actually more uh, more readers and uh, and can better create a, a, a public a public opinion uh, opinion in the world. So essentially, we we've, we've, uh, we've given a greater and, and bigger picture on on, on arousing a public attention. So uh, so uh, uh, so the end of the target well, tar uh, discourses. Uh, this course's target uh, is actually uh, is actually uh, more developed countries because uh, because they are more civilized and they are more open minded and they will actually agree with with the homo at least to actually press on uh, press on their local governments to do something and and the end of it will be will be no more sponsorship no more uh, no more signing teams and no more presidents coming to to the opening ceremony to actually pressurize uh, these governments uh, uh, the Russian governments uh, to actually uh, do something and we we believe that is a more feasible way because when we considering Russia that they, that they they want to build their national pride and they would uh, and they won't have their uh, have their uh, have their Olympics screwed up because of this uh, of uh, uh, of the presidents not coming forward because of the spillover effect because other heterosexual 
uh, heterosexual ethnic would not like to teach, uh, but who actually uh, have uh, have uh, the uh, have the universal values would actually uh, 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 take part in the boycott and not and not having a really great game. And for these reasons, we believe that uh, our model is better. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Sochi Olympics will be the most expensive Olympics ever. Yeah. And that is because the Russian government realizes that this is a wonderful opportunity for them to improve their international image on the global arena and force them better yeah. diplomatic ties with other nations. So we think the entire government bench has failed to engage with the characterization we've given you since opening that the Russian government has every incentive to ensure the security of every single athlete that has come to participate in the Olympic Games, including all the homosexual athletes. And we have told you that Calvis will actually further empower the gay rights movement within Social Olympics. First of all, we are close to opposition exclusively told you that how it is extremely important for these uh, homophobic people within these local communities to have this visual impact and visually see the physical strength of these athletes because of, of the unique place that physical strength uh, occupies um, in the discrimination towards homosexuals. So basically two huge issues in today's debate. Firstly, let's take a look on the principal side. The first point is regarding wow. opening government's point regarding the spirit of Olympics. They want the Olympics to be an inclusive, tolerant game. We agree with them. Yeah. Actually, Jeff gave us this example about even though North Korea is a dictatorship government, dictatorship regime, we still invite their athletes to participate in the Olympics. Why is that so? Because we realize regardless of your political divide or even moral divide to some extent, when, we, when it comes to sports, people can put aside these differences and come together to enjoy sports and forget Hello. about, no, sit down, forget about what their previous divide Shame. is. Right? We think that is the true kind of tolerant and inclusive Olympic spirit you should be standing for. And we think boycotting this game simply because some people within Sochi don't agree with you, you're actually punishing the other people who simply want to enjoy sports, right? Yeah. And we think this kind of collective punishment on a community after actually goes against the kind of inclusiveness and tolerance that we want to tell you. So the second issue under this point is actually related to the extension of Jack, Jackie, sorry, Jackie gave you, right, on identity. So we all I Jeff earlier on about people shouldn't be forced to choose between which identity they want to prioritize because people have multiple dimensions of identities. Some people want to prioritize sportsmanship. Some people may think that their sexual, uh, uh, sexual uh, sexuality is something more important. I think, as Jackie has already told you, what you're essentially doing, especially as Jeff said, you, all, you want every single gay athlete to boycott the game. It can make it extremely difficult for those gay people who want to participate in this game. Because now if they participate in their game, they will be labeled as traitor of the gay community, betraying their own sexual identity. So we think, yes, you do have certain freedom to choose which identity you want to prioritize. So you think you can still prioritize your sexual identity by going to participate in the game, but probably at the same time also, uh, say, having pro-gay or pro-homosexual propaganda or waving a banner or things like that. But it's still viable. But we think you shouldn't make other people, especially like ho closeted homosexuals or people who feel their sportsmanship is more important, you shouldn't force them to feel that they must also boycott. You shouldn't uh -huh. force them to feel that they must choose which identity they want to prioritize. Now let's take a look at the practical side because people tell you that they're not actually helping the homosexuals anyway. So first let's take a look at how the Russia government will react. So please engage with our context. Okay, no one uh, can engage now, but anyhow, we told you that they will not block up these athletes. In fact, Putin himself has made a TV public announcement that these homosexual athletes will be protected. We think if any homosexual athlete gets locked up, get locked up or beaten up, it's extremely detrimental to Russia's public image because it shows you're a country that is incapable here, here. of protecting the security of people that you're inviting within your borders. It shows it show, also shows that you're failed to uh, fail to honor your commitment about hosting a secure and safe Olympics First for one, other athletes, right? So we don't think the Russian government is ever going to do that. Secondly, let's take a look at the media, right? Because what they're saying is, if these athletes compete in these games, the Russian media will have overwhelming rhetoric about how, you know, some homosexual athletes fail. 
We say that will not happen because we realize that in the status quo, Russian media is still heavily controlled and influenced by the state. In the status quo, we have already characterized you about how Putin wants to solve this PR crisis by telling uh, governments around the world that your homosexual athletes will still be protected here. So we think the Russian state actually government has a very important incentive to censor these media and ensure this kind of homophobic kind of rhetoric does not get broadcast alive on Russian state media because it destroys your entire purpose of trying to tell other nations that uh -huh. Russia can still foster good international relations, right? We think when Putin is actually trying to encourage homosexual athletes to come, make sure that they can feel safe, we don't think the kind of anti gay rhetoric in Russian media is really going to happen. Let's take a look at their side of the house. What's going to happen when none of these athletes go to participate in these kind of games, right? We have already earlier on POI them because we think that if uh, if people feel that these athletes are actually afraid, that these athletes can never have a way to prove that they're not scared, right? Because they're not participating in the games anyway. They have no counter proof and no way and no kind of counter no, narrative, right? So we heard. Oh yes, I'll take you, madam. The internal presentation of the Russian media is not being received by the Western media, so therefore the internal audience will still be the Russian public. So essentially, the state does not have to censor anything in order for that message to get through. Sir, yes, the Russian media is broadcast to the Russian public. But we think at the same time, you also have correspondents from CNN, from BBC. When these correspondents in Russia go back and have an article on CNN saying that, guess what, all the Russian news I'm seeing are saying homosexuals are bad. It completely tears down your entire international image. You have no stance whatsoever in the international arena. We don't think that's going to happen. So back to the point, right? So we think that if you don't participate in the game, you can actually never prove that you're physically strong. And as Jackie has told you, we actually do believe that the visual impact and demonstrating your physical strength in the sports arena in front of these local Sochi's, because we do think we host um, games in Sochi, it's likely that the uh, arena will be dominated by a Russian audience, right? We think the kind of visual impact is extremely important because as Jackie has told you, that traditionally, especially for male gay athletes, they have been used perceived as physically weak or even more feminine and mentally weaker and not persevering as, uh, as the other type of athletes. So we told you that physical, this kind of demonstration, visual demonstration of physical strength, is extremely important and we do believe it can actually help to combat homosexuality. Furthermore, we say, for the social homosexual minorities, because now the government is actually keeping homosexual athletes safe, we now have, uh, we empower the gay right movement because this gay right movement can now hold the government to same standards uh, by telling them you should also protect the other homosexuals in our community. Make sure they're safe as well because you have done that for these groups of homosexuals. So we think both of principle and practical level, we should take the debate. Yeah, Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure 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 I'm not s